Ken Whiting with Paddle TV and in this video we are talking about how to video your kayaking or paddling adventures. Now if a paddling adventure is worth doing it's definitely worth capturing on video and it in fact it actually can add a really interesting layer of adventure to your paddling adventure and so sometimes I don't want to take on the added responsibility of filming but a lot of times I really 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 look forward to filming my paddling adventures and along the way I've learned a lot of well some expensive lessons and some just really valuable lessons that I'm happy to share with you. And so that's what this video is about, how to self-film your paddling adventures. We're gonna look at how to choose the right camera. We're gonna look at how and where to mount the cameras. We're gonna look at uh, camera settings, and then we're gonna talk about audio considerations. Let's start with choosing the right camera. The most obvious choices when choosing a camera for filming your kayaking adventures are number one, a phone. Phones, cameras right now really are amazing and they keep getting better. The only problem with filming with the phone is they, they keep going up in cost too. A phone is very expensive, especially one with a good camera. And it's not even so much the cost if you end up losing this thing, it's also all the, the data on here, all your photos, your contacts, if you haven't done a good job of backing up. Not only is this, you're losing a lot of money, but you're losing a lot of stuff with it. And so for that reason alone, I do not film with the phone. I use an action camera. An action camera, even the best action cameras are a lot cheaper than a phone. Inevitably, you will lose a camera. It's inevitable. If you're mounting things on your kayak or playing around with cameras in your, on, the, on your kayak over the water, eventually it's gonna go into the water. One of our cameras got hot. and needed to go for a little dip in the canal. And so an action camera is a lot less painful to lose. There are lots of action cameras out there right now, but, Still, hands down, the GoPros are, uh, they're the best. They're absolutely my favorite. I'm 100% not sponsored by GoPro or anything like that. They've been doing it for the longest and they, they're the pioneers and they keep pushing the, the boundaries of what you can do with such a small camera. Now this is the, the latest one, the GoPro Hero 9, and what it can do is pretty amazing. So let's talk about the actual GoPro series of action cams and how to choose really, how to choose the right GoPro for filming your kayaking adventures. So first things first, whether you are using a GoPro or anything else, waterproofing is absolutely key. Now the GoPro 7, 8, 9 are all waterproof by nature. You don't need a waterproof case like you used to have in earlier models and like you still do for a lot of other action cameras. But to take a camera that isn't waterproofed out on the water, expect to throw that money away at some point in the near future. Get a waterproof camera. Now the next thing to talk about is image stabilization. And what is that? Well, an image stabilization means when your camera is moving or shaking or jostling around that the actual image won't be mirroring the, all that movement. That the picture being captured is a lot stiller and smoother. It, it's digitally smoothing that image out. And that is of enormous, enormous value when you're filming from your kayak. When you ha have these things mounted on a kayak, your, kayak pl your kayak's plastic has some bend in it. Your, the mounts that you're gonna use have some play in them. All that adds up to wiggle, unless your kayak is perfectly still, and then that never happens, the, the camera's going to wiggle, and the image stabilization really reduces or completely eliminates that. The GoPro 7, 8, and 9 all have image stabilization. I don't think the earlier models do, um, but 
it's gotten better with every generation of the camera. The GoPro 9 not only has the best image stabilization, but it also has something called horizon leveling, which no matter which, how far the camera gets tilted, it's gonna keep the horizon flat. So here is a quick test to show you the value of image stabilization. All right, this is without image stabilization. And this is something you're not gonna see very often, me running. And this is me with stabilization on. And don't expect me to show you this again, because I really don't like running. The next feature that is really handy for filming your own kayaking adventures is voice activation. And the reason for that is a lot of times to get the best shots on your kayak, the, the camera isn't reachable from your seat. And so with voice activation, you can just say, GoPro, start recording. Or GoPro, stop recording. Thank you. And that takes care of business right there. You can even tell the GoPro to turn off. Did you not hear me? I said, GoPro, turn off. Thank you. Now, I believe GoPros 5 and up have voice activation. I'm not 100% sure on that, but really because of the other features, stabilization and waterproofness, um, the 7, 8, 9 are really the ones to be looking at. Next thing to talk about is framing. Now, the GoPro 9, what it has, which the other GoPros don't, is a screen on the front of the camera. So when you have it set up, filming yourself, you can see what the framing looks like. If you're using an earlier model, there's no actual screen here, uh, then what you really need to do, and trust me when I say this, is get someone to double check the framing once you're sitting in your kayak seat. Otherwise, you're going to shoot for a couple of hours and think you have the best video and you'll go back and look at your footage and find that the videos cut you off right at the nose or it'll just be your, your head at the bottom of the screen and you'll be seeing the sky. That's a huge value of the GoPro 9 is being able to see what the framing is uh, when it's facing you. While the GoPro 9 makes framing yourself a lot easier, you do have the option of seeing what the framing looks like through the GoPro app on your phone. You, you can connect wirelessly to your other GoPros and see what the framing looks like. Now the pain in the butt there is, it's a pain in the butt to connect your phone to the, the GoPro and check things out. It's much easier to just look at the screen. And number two, that wireless connection, it drains the GoPro battery pretty quick. Slow motion is another feature that's great to have available on your action camera. Now, most action cameras have some type of slow motion. And when you first get them, I guarantee you, you'll probably end up using it nonstop because it's really kind of cool at first to watch everything happen in slow, even water dripping off your paddle is like, wow, that's cool. But you will overuse it and it's very easy to do. And I would highly recommend only use the slow motion when you've got really active paddling happening. Otherwise, it's gonna get old real quick. A final feature that's worth noting, once again, from the new GoPro 9, is their hindsight feature. And what that is, is the camera, you can actually set it, so the camera is capturing 30 up to 30 seconds before you hit the record button. And so that's great for when you're doing activities where you're not sure when something's gonna happen and you don't wanna miss that moment. Uh, fishing is a great example. If you're kayak fishing and you're casting all day and you don't wanna just keep recording casting, you wanna wait for the, the catch. And so you have it set with hindsight and you cast and cast and when you catch that fish, you hit record and you'll get the 30 seconds preceding to when you hit the record button. It's a great feature for not missing the moment. All right, now let's talk about how and where to mount your cameras. Now this is where it gets actually really fun because there's 
almost an endless number of options, especially since there's a variety of companies that have made solutions above and beyond what comp the camera companies like GoPro have provided. There's companies like Yak Attack, Railblaze, uh, uh, and Ram, and just to name a few that are creating camera mounts. But let's take a look. Let's start at the, the most simplest mounting solutions for your camera, and then we'll look at the, the, the more involved ones. The simplest mounting solution are these sticky GoPro mounts. And as long as you have a flat, smooth surface, you stick these suckers on and then GoPro literally just snaps in, boom. That's a really simple option and you can mount those, again, anywhere that has a smooth, uh, clean surface. There's these suction cup mounts that are available as well. These suction cup mounts can be really cool for some applications, but I would not recommend these on a kayak. They just aren't, they're prone to failure. I'll put it that way. Uh, if you do choose to use these, it has to be an absolutely clean and smooth surface, not a dimpled surface of the plastic or whatever, uh, whatever material your kayak is, is made out of. And definitely use a security line. What I mean by that is tie a secondary rope around this whole unit and something that's not going to move on your kayak so that if this falls off, you haven't lost your camera as well. A third simple solution is this clip. Now these clips are fantastic for just attaching to almost anywhere on a kayak that you can get a good grip. Now something to note is that it's not secure there. This camera is going to wobble there, but that's okay if you have a camera with really good image stabilization. It doesn't need to be rock solid. It just has to not come off. <laughs> I actually just used this clip on an inflatable um, pedal kayak. Let me show you. Now this kayak here, kind of pedal kayak, paddleboard, whatever you want to call it, this inflatable really doesn't have anywhere to mount attachments. I can't drill uh, mounting platforms in here. And so all I did was I took this clip and attached it right to the grab loop. Now it's got some wiggle, but it works with image stabilization. It works just fine. So the next camera mounting solution isn't to mount the camera to your kayak. It's to mount the camera to you. And you can get head cams, straps that attach like a headlamp to your head, but I've definitely found the best views have come from the chesty cam. And the chesty cam, very simple, just drop it in, and there you have it. The nice thing about the chest cam is that it also does a great job of picking up your voice. So if you are planning on doing some voicing, some audio, this is a great place to capture your voice from. Now stepping things up a little from those basic mounts, now you, there are a variety of actual camera mount accessories that are available, and they attach to tracks, uh, gear tracks. Now a lot of kayaks, like fishing kayaks and some rec kayaks, have gear tracks already installed on the kayak themselves, and that's really helpful, but still, those gear tracks may not be where you want to mount the camera or your kayak might not have any type of gear tracks and that's very common as well that's not a big deal you can mount gear tracks very easily to any kayak almost wherever you want anywhere you have a good flat surface i'm not going to show you how in this video because i just did that in another video i'll leave a link in the description box down be below so you can check out how to mount specifically how to mount uh accessories to a kayak. But what I want to show you is how awesome these things are. Because what they do is they provide you with almost infinite angles from one mounting position. Now the base is secured to the kayak now. I can easily turn this camera whatever direction I want with a tw quick twist here. I can tilt it in any direction that way. A quick twist up here, I'm loosening down here, and I can twist this camera in any direction that way as well. 
really an infinite number of angles you can get and it's in this case it's very reachable from your sitting position. Now the next question is okay well where is the best spot to to mount these? Well if you're going to mount something in the front of the kayak like this a camera mount then make sure it's not in the way of paddling. You know, it's really that simple. Uh, you want it to be pretty far forward. This one is just ahead of the foot pegs and it should be okay. Depends on your paddling style, how long your paddle is, but it, it may not be. You may need to mount a, uh, put a mounting pad uh, somewhere forward so that you can get it out of the way of your paddle strokes. Um, so play around in the front, but in the back, really you have a lot more options. Uh, now in the back you need something a little higher otherwise you're just going to be filming the back of your seat. So there's a few options you can do in the back. All right so we have back here a couple of gear tracks on either side so we can mount these camera mounts wherever we want. Now this is the Pan, uh, Yak Attacks Pan uh, Panfish Pro. This is Railblaze's Boom 600 and I think this is Ram's uh, tough pole camera mount. Lots of camera mounts to choose from here. But all of them do the same thing, is they provide, once again, so much flexibility of what direction you want to film. I mean, if you have a reason to shoot behind you, you can just simply twist this around. This ball here provides, you know, limitless flexibility there. This is a great spot to do an over the shoulder shot where you see everything in front, but you also see yourself in frame. The other thing you can do, which is kind of cool to do sometimes, is to put this thing over the water perspective here. There. And now you got a really neat perspective from outside the kayak. It's almost like someone else is filming you. You know, there's so many different things you can do. You can actually even do this with the camera in the water. And then you're getting cool underwater shots as your paddle blade comes through the water. Uh, which if the water's not that clear, doesn't really work too well, but if you have clear water, it makes for some great shots. And once again, something you have to keep in mind is that when you have a longer pull, you're only gonna get more bounce, more play in your camera. And so having image stabilization is, have I mentioned that before? Because I really don't like running. <laughs> image stabilization is absolutely key for getting good camera footage. What I love about this is you really can be creative, play around all sorts of different throughout your kayak and where you set it up for at the, at the beginning of the day, I mean, change it five minutes later, 10 minutes later, mess around. One camera you can mount in a hundred different spots on your kayak throughout the day if you take the time to hop out and, and mess around and try different things with it. Someone that has done a really cool job of, um, of filming themselves with not just GoPros, they are they used some other cameras as well, is another YouTuber named Gatewood Brown. And I'll leave a link in the description box down below to him because he's got some great kayaking adventure films that he self shoots and largely via GoPro. So another mounting option is actually not mounting the camera on your kayak, but placing it on shore so you get a totally different perspective, a perspective of you paddling past the camera. I recently did this on a paddling trip I did, actually more of a paddling mission, and I wanted to get some shots from shore, so I brought, this is actually the GoPro three-way, and it's not only like a selfie stick that, you know, totally moves, but it's got a tripod built into it. And so I just placed this on shore, set it up the way I wanted it to, told it, GoPro start recording and then I paddled past it a few times and got a really neat shot by myself. So now let's talk about camera settings. Now there's no one size fits all when it comes to camera settings. It really depends on what you intend to do with the footage and what kind of equipment you have to manipulate or edit the footage afterwards. If you have a powerful computer and an editing suite or just a solid computer, you can probably shoot most stuff or everything in 4K. Now 4K gives you, is the highest resolution pretty much. It gives you a wonderful image and it gives you flexibility to do things like crop right in, zoom in on the footage and still not have it look pixelated. Those files can be a beast 
to work with and really slow your computer down if you don't have a solid computer. Uh, what I tend to tell people to do, and what I tend to do myself a lot, is shoot in 2.7K. Now that's slightly more than your standard HD, your 1080, um, but uh, it's not so big like 4K that the files are difficult to move. The benefits of shooting in 2.7K is that it's still bigger than HD, so you can manipulate the images. You can level the horizon. You can crop in a little bit if you need to, or you can crop some things out if you want to crop some things out. It gives you flexibility. Now, let's talk about frame rate. Now, the frame rate is how many images is the camera capturing each second. And the typical frame rates are 24, uh, at least in North America, or 24, 30, 60, 120, and 240. Now a standard video you'll see is usually 24 or 30 frames per second. Uh, a 24 frames per second is typically used to provide more of a cinematic look. Now action cameras really aren't designed for a cinematic picture. So I really don't think it matters too much if you use 24 or 30 frames per second. Personally, I film most stuff at 60 frames per second. And the reason for that is because it gives you the option to use it at normal speed and you capture all the same audio, everything's the same, but you also can slow that footage to 50% and it's super smooth. So you have semi slow motion, but it's super smooth. Another decision you're going to need to make with an action camera is what perspective to use. Do you use a narrow perspective? Do you use a linear wide or some cameras offer super wide or super view? For me, I find that narrow is usually too narrow. It's too small of a, uh, of a, a frame unless you're shooting something far away. It doesn't typically, not something you typically do with action cameras. I'm usually using linear or wide, because the super wide, it tends to really distort things. They, they just don't look natural. Linear and wide don't distort things. Wide might distort things a little, but it's not nearly as noticeable. So which do you use? Well, it depends on where the camera is and how close you want things. If the camera is very close, but you still want to get a lot in frame, use wide. If the camera is a bit further away, maybe it's at the end of your kayak, your end of your boat, use linear. You have to play around with that, but I like to stick between linear and wide. There are all sorts of other options that are available in the higher end action cameras. And when you get to playing around with those, it really comes down to personal preference and what you like to do and how much time you're willing uh, to spend and wanting to spend in post-production, in an editing program, manipulating color, manipulating the image. Uh, a lot of those settings really are irrelevant to most people. They just want a picture uh, that they can plug into an editing, some type of editing software and create a video of their adventure. And that's great. So you typically don't have to worry about deeper settings than what I've just talked about right now. All right, last but not least, let's talk about audio. Now, you may not be interested in capturing audio at all. You just might want to have the video from your trip. But if you do want to capture audio, there's a few things to keep in mind. Now, the audio coming off of it that you capture with an action camera like a GoPro is only going to be reasonable when it's quite close to you within arm's length. Anything further than that and it's picking up too much ambient sound, the wind is going to totally distort it, it it's just not going to pick your voice up very well. If you want to do better videos, you know, one of the biggest differences between a quality video and an amateur video isn't the footage. Because a lot of times you're capturing the same footage from, you know, from the same camera mounted in the same way. It's audio. Audio makes a huge difference. So how do you get good audio with an action camera? Well, GoPro came out with what they call the media mod for GoPro 8 and 9s. Now this is the GoPro 9 with the media mod on it. As you can see, it has an external shotgun type mic. It does a better job of picking up audio from 
in front and not just everywhere around. Uh, more importantly, it's still not a great mic. It really doesn't do much of a difference. I tested this recently and I was like, ah, a little bit underwhelmed with the improvement it provided over the internal mic here. The real benefit for, from the media mod is the fact that you can now plug in an external, uh, what's called a lav mic. You can have a wireless mic system attached, connected to the GoPro, and that's going to raise your audio levels tremendously. This is the Rode Go. This was specifically designed for attaching to action cameras like this. And all you do is pop it into the hot shoe adapter at the top, plug it in, boom. That's the receiver. On your person, you have the actual mic. Now this mic, it's got a furry windscreen on here. It might look funny. In fact, I got one going on right here. <laughs> uh, they look funny, but they do an incredible job of reducing the wind noise from the environment. And it doesn't, without one of these things on, it doesn't take much wind to turn your audio into mush. So uh, these, this Road Go system comes with this, these furry uh, windscreens that actually are designed specifically to clip right on. It's pretty cool. Now you can just literally clip, the, the mic is on here. You literally just clip it on to your life jacket, anywhere, you know, relatively close to where you're speaking. And now you're capturing very good audio to your, uh, to your GoPro. So stepping it up even more, you can take this Rode Go, plug in an external mic, lav mic. Now you can chuck this in your pocket, your life jacket pocket, clip this mic onto your life jacket or, uh, or your, under your shirt like I have going right now and you're getting even better sound. Let's take a quick trip on the water and I'm gonna show you the difference between good audio and bad audio. All right, so this is what it sounds like when I'm using the mic, which is attached right here. This is the higher quality sound. That should be pretty self-evident. Now this is what it sounds like when I'm just capturing audio from the internal mic on the GoPro. I'm guessing it doesn't sound quite as nice. Now where the mic makes the biggest difference is when the camera's not close and directly in front of you. Right now, the camera is behind me. This is what it sounds like when I'm wearing the Rode Go mic. And this is what it sounds like when I'm just using the internal mic on the GoPro. Now, I imagine there's quite a bit of difference. And you don't want to be paddling and talking to a camera behind you the whole time. Lots of options out there for audio. Does it matter to you or not? Each one of these upgrades obviously costs money. Um, but in the end, how much are your memories really worth? For me, they're worth a lot. And that's why I love capturing this stuff on camera. And I love having good audio options. But that's also what I do. So it might not make sense for you. I hope though you have learned something from this video. And if you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and stay tuned because we got lots more paddling videos coming your way.